Hey beautiful people, Old Man Ben, uh, in a very unique camera angle. You normally don't see this side of the studio, but I thought I would take a minute. In fact, I've written a nice long script to explain how we make a podcast, video form, all that fun stuff, basically just our tool chain. And I've decided not to use the script. It doesn't sound natural. So fair warning, there's going to be some rambling, but allow me to take you on a Linux powered journey. We are ultimately doing a podcast that is 80% of our audience's downloads. So our audio has got to be decent. It doesn't have to be perfect, but it has to be good enough for government work. So let's head over to where it all starts. And that is our door. That's our DAW. If I hit the right button, I should go. Hey, that's going to work. This is going to be weird doing it this way. I'm in a very unfortunate angle, but... This is our processing stack for everyone, myself included. I'm going to walk you down the stack, starting with noise repellent. Well, let's get up to the very top. This is the only analog to digital conversion that takes place in the entire studio. This is this microphone going into an interface. And of course, it's Firewire because I'm a hipster. Well, Firewire is a better protocol. USB is a nightmare to work with, and we're on Linux, so we have plenty of support. And you can see, it's just coming in over analog four. Easily done. This is with Jack too. Okay, now let's get to the fun stuff. Noise repellent. This is noise repellent. That's, that's what it does. It'll, it helps eliminate some background noise. So if, to give you an example of that, let me pull off the gate more than that at 11. Listen closely. You can hear just that little bit of static in the background. I can kick that in. Hey, now you can hear it. Hear that? That's the mouse. That was the gate that I took off. Once it's run through that, now I have two options. I have regular noise repellent and I have noise suppression. Noise suppression is more of a, like a brick wall limiter. I mean, it works. It'll get rid of nasty stuff in the background, like um, mariachi bands playing in the same room. It'll help filter some of that out. But at the cost, think of it like, it's based on RN noise. It's a uh, VST plugin. It, like RTX Voice. It, it it works. It works incredibly well, but at the cost of fidelity of the audio. So I'll typically only use this if I have a bunch of fans on for a game stream. I'd never use this for a podcast be just because of the um, hit. And it adds a little bit of delay. We can kick it in there. You can see... Uh, what are we getting... Uh, about 0.23 milliseconds on that. Plus, I don't like what it does to the audio that much, but it's good enough for a game stream, and I wouldn't have a problem with that. But let's get back to our gate. This is uh, from Linux Studio Project. This is an open source plugin. All the ones so far are. A gate is just going to cut out stuff up to a certain threshold. You know, um, I don't want to pick up. I don't have a clicky clacky keyboard. I'm not that type of person. But I have a clicky clicky mouse and maybe I'm going to like tap on the desk or tap out a chair or something like that. That doesn't need to be in the recording. So what a gate does is takes care of that. Like right now, I'm hammering on the mouse. I'm tapping on the desk, tapping on the, you're not going to hear it. So it just slams everything close until you get to whatever your threshold is set to, which, you know, you can adjust like so. And after that point, typically to your voice, then you can talk, do your thing, and you don't end up with unnecessary background noise when you're not doing anything. That's great. Okay, moving on. After you've got the gate, compression, an integral part of anything. I don't know, man. Compressors are... A necessary evil, I don't typically use much in the way of compression, but for the, uh, you know, like Jill, pa well, Jill and Jordan, get to use compression on them. What does a compressor do? Um, to oversimplify, it makes loud stuff quiet and the quiet stuff loud. The one I'm using is the ACM 510. This is a commercial plugin. It's the only plugin in the entire stack that's not open source, but it's cheap. It's like... 30 pounds. What are we looking at? Um, this is just your input DB. Now, this is your threshold. Threshold just says, okay, what does a compressor begin with? Think about a compressor as just a fader. 
It's a slider that moves really quick. So that's really all compression is doing. Once you get to a certain trigger, it's going to take it down, and then it's going to release. So this is your threshold. Threshold's just saying, hey, man, once you get to this point, then I'm going to cut on effectively. Oversimplifying, please spare me the well actuallys in the comments. Now you have your attack. That is how quick it's going to come on. So, you know, I have this set to, what do I even have this set? Three millisecond attack. That's when it's going to kick in in three milliseconds. You can relax it, tighten it up for voice. You want it reasonably tight. Now release does exactly what you would think release would. That's how long it's going to stay on and let go and wait for another trigger. Then we have ratios. Ratios are like onions. They're not. I just wanted to be able to say that. It's a horrible analogy. Ratios are going in from, from one to one compression to you can go up to like eight to one, 10 to one. For voice, you probably want to keep it around 1.2 to maybe 2, 2.3. If you want to go full NPR, and set it on like 4 to 1, something like that. Um, that is just how aggressively it's going to pull down, I think is an easy way to explain that. So the, the higher your ratio, the flatter it's going to get. But once you're done with that, this is your output, this is your makeup gain, because you're taking, like, um, you know, you, you're smashing down all your highs, but then you need to bring your overall volume back up to, you know, wherever you need it to be. So, you know, it's not, like, perfectly flat, not perfectly flat, but, you know, tampered down, you're not getting any, like, uh, crazy spikes or anything, but you can bring everything back up. That's what you're doing with your output DB. Every compressor, be it analog, I like this compressor because... It works very much like my analog compressors. And uh, the LSP has a great compressor in it. It's got a bunch of moon interface stuff on it. I don't like to deal with. This works. They're all laid out a little bit differently. This is what you would typically see on a 500 series console. So that's why I like it. And it gets the job done. Um, there's high pass filters and all the other fun stuff you would expect to see. It does its job. Uh, can I just... Yeah, if I just disable that, you're not going to notice uh, I can come up much higher, but not too much higher because, you know, I'm gain staging set up correctly. But if I kick it on, you'll see that, you know, second I'm coming over like plus three and I'm on a K20 meter. And you're like, but Vin, you're doing broadcast. You should be on a K12 meter. Nay, I like dynamic range. So that's when it's kicking in so you're not getting your ears blown out and it's an overall smoother experience so once we're done with compression we're gonna do the de-essing what's de -esser? de -esser, um compression tends to add the snick jazz that's it um really brings that out so you want to you want to Tamper that down a little bit. This just removes uh, some of the semblance. This is from CAF. This is a CAF plugin, CAFstudio.org, I believe. Just type in CAF plugins on whatever search engine you use, and you'll find that. It's LV2 plugin. It works. It's great. And uh, it knocks down the uh, snake jazz. I mean, I can... That's my new album. But yeah. You get an idea of what that does. After that, uh, limiter. I wouldn't have a limiter. A limiter is a brick wall. Well, the one I use is. If it, like for whatever reason, um, like if I happened to look down at my feet and I saw a bunny rabbit and I just screamed and blew everything out and just sheer terror and panic. I don't want to hurt you at home because we're doing this live. All of this is taking place live. If I was just doing a recording for a podcast, wasn't I wouldn't have a limiter, but I have the limiter for your safety across the board. If we get anywhere close to like uh, minus 60 dB, it's just going to smash it at the cost of audio fidelity, but saving your ears. You really don't want to be hitting your limiter at all while you're talking. Um, you know, maybe just tapping it on the very top, but you don't want to be like, boom. You can see it kicked in just a little bit. But uh, what do we have? After that, we have delay. So let me reach over here and press. press. Hello, Hello, this, this is, is delay. delay. I use I, that for um, 
Linux Game Test Weekly when we do Linux, uh, Steam Update of the Week, all that fun stuff. That's only there for that. After that, we have, these are auxiliary sins. They are going out to Pedro, Discord, Guest, and that's by monitor, where I can hear myself and everyone else. We use this for Mix Minus. You'll see um, over here, this is the Mix Minus. What that does is, you know, uh, Jill's track would be a better example. Jill's going out, so she her voice is going out to Pedro, Discord, Guest, monitor not herself so on jill's track she is only going to hear pedro uh discord myself I'm not going to hear yourself back then we don't have to rely on echo cancellation you'll, you'll hear people talk on a show or something and when they talk over each other it goes, right then it'll kind of that's annoying. I immediately cut something off like that. Always set up a proper mix minus. This is a digital way to do it. There's about 19 ways to set up mix minus. I've just done it with the routing internally using aux sins and the buses with our door because I'm just trying to keep everything inside instead of rewiring it still virtually with Jack. But yeah, you know, there's a couple of ways to do that. You can do it. Most of your mixers, if you're just using a hardware mixer, you're going to have aux sins. That's what they're for. Okay. So I'm coming in through that. Now, this is where things change a little bit, because if I go to my outputs, I have a uh, guest, Pedro. I have seven channels on Threadbooper and Jordan. This is all over the network. I said, the only analog to digital conversion is this microphone. Everything else in the studio is audio over IP using NetJack. It's lossless, it's low latency, it's open source, it's brilliant. So my track is going out to channel two on Threadbooper. And as you would guess, you know, like Jill, Pedro, guest Discord, and you know, Jill would be going out to channel three and Pedro going out to channel four and the like. Now they're coming in through the same way. I mean, you know, using NetJack coming in. So Jordan would be coming in through Jill because Jordan and Jill swap channels. Same thing with, you know, Pedro's going to be coming in this, all the hardware, nothing's activated, but there it is. Pedro's coming in from his box because to the right of me under the desk, there's three PCs and that's how we end, you know, everybody together on audio track, audio channel. Because when I record, this is what we have. This is, I guess you would call it the, like the master recording, you know, the gold track or whatever. This is just a dry recording. I can export the stems, you know, individual WAV files with, with or without plugin automation, you know, if I, but if I ever need to go back and change something, it's easy enough of interest to me was the 3070 at 599. That's me talking. That's horrifying, isn't it? Series of releases of Blender and it has lots of improvements, you know, including like, oh gosh, updates to everything to the EV. Cycles renderer. It's pretty neat. And, you know, going through that, when I go back, I can adjust any of the plugin settings. I can adjust the fader settings. I can make somebody quieter, louder, whatever. But my goal is always to get this right um, because this is going out to the live stream and I'm also recording it with a video and everything. And if something is immeasurably wrong, I can always go back and change it preferably i wouldn't like to but it's a great little time machine if i it's also helpful if i need to go back and you know just fine tune something for the next show i have that file well that session there i can do that okay that that's it for how the audio comes in let me show you what happens next maybe i'll even yeah look what happens next that has more effect to it okay now we are back um on the main box i should point out all of this is on its separate box uh, i call it jackbox it's just a old or ryzen 1 1700 and you're seeing this this is coming over um x11 forwarding you know ssh x that's kind of brilliant and these these are not mixers this is a question i've gotten a couple of times these are just control surfaces. All they are are um, 
just MIDI. So they're just dials and switches that send over to a USB cable to control the software. So yeah, that's all that is. But let's see the game that we're playing. We're gonna have to zoom out a little bit so I can show you this. Uh, sound cards, what are we using for sound cards? Well, this is gonna throw you sideways. That's our configuration right there. No sound cards available for configuration. And just in case you think I'm playing with you, let's check out a play. No sound cards. None. I wasn't messing around. That. We're not doing anything um, with analog digital conversion. So if I go to my input devices, you will see a bunch of jack sources. So I have OBS game music, Pulse Audio. This is Pulse Audio Jack Bridge. This lets me tie it into other applications and other fun stuff like that. I have Pedro, Jordan, Discord, myself. And for output devices, I basically have one for ADAT. It's not really ADAT. That is just what it ended up getting named because I originally was using ADAT. And that's just for music. And we have one for game audio. Then we have one that goes out to uh, Discord for our live feed, just our audio only. That's how that works because back to OBS, you can see, you know, that's, that's just my audio right there. Now, how do we record that? A little more interesting. So let's go into settings and can I just move this here? I'm going to have fun editing this. So this is our audio. Audio stock disabled 48K stereo because what we do is set up, let's go back to OBS. I do an audio pack, one for myself, Jordan, Pedro, Discord, and I just copy that for every scene I need it in because let's open up Advanced Mixer. And we got to scooch that over there. We're recording to, we're taking advantage of the six available tracks. So track one is a stereo pair that's going to go out to Twitch. And that's just a mix down of everyone's audio. And that works just fine. Then for myself, I'm on track two, Pedro's on track three, Jordan's on four, uh, Discord's on five, and game music is on six. It works. Now, to give you a visual idea, let me show you. This is Katia. This is just a, like a GUI visualization. Um, what you're seeing on system is this box. It's coming over the network. Um, there's a 10 gig fiber link that sends all the tracks over and it's sending over the jack. It's sending over my volume. You can kind of get an idea. This is me coming in and I don't know if you can really make out the VU meter jumping up there, but it's in line with this one. Then we have Jordan, Pedro, Discord and game music. And this is all coming you know, this is this box, the Threadripper, and this is going out. So if I have somebody on Discord on this box, or this is uh, ADAT again, this would just be game music. And if for game audio, it's another virtual sync that goes to this box and comes back for the live stream that's roundabout. But Jack's NetJack is super low latency, so we don't have any issue. And there's no um, format conversion, you know, it's all 32-bit. Float 32 LE. So that's something I should point out. You know, everything when it comes from these two boxes into the DAW to, you know, coming over the network, then coming out of the DAW per channel, there's no conversion. I mean, it's Float 32. It's great. It's brilliant. So let me get back to those settings that I was showing you earlier. How do we record this? So. For streaming, I do nothing fancy at all. This is a NVIDIA 2060 Turing NV encode. We stream to Twitch. I use the H.264 encoder, constant bitrate, 8K. Twitch is like, use six. I'm like, shut up, Twitch. Take eight. It will. Keyframes two, max quality high, and D frames two. Now, that's bug standard. Nothing advanced here. Recording, slightly different story. What we are using is a move container. Our video bit rate is 290. One keyframe. We record at 1080 But and our audio, you'll see. Oh, I should point out we're using we record to DNX HD, which is 209 1080p. It it's not very heavily compressed. It looks good and it's great for editing because we haven't gotten to the podcast part just yet. It, it's stick with me. 
You're going to have that oh moment in a minute. At least I hope you will. Maybe you'll be like, oh, it's dumb, Ben. That's great. But we can still be friends. I'll come over. We'll play Sonic the Hedgehog. So our audio bit rate is 3072 for each channel and audio tracks. We're recording two, three, four, five, and six. When we're recording them in PCM float 32, little Indian. That's going to brilliant. So we're just going to end up with a big audio file with um, five audio tracks in it. You know, just let me show you. This is where it gets interesting. So let me cancel this out and I'm going to minimize best $300 I ever spent. Also, it has the advantage uh, if you want to use the free version of DaVinci Resolve, DNX HD from OBS, you just import it right in. There are no limitations whatsoever. We are going to open up the most recent episode of Linux Weekly Daily Wednesdays. Now, let's head over to that edit tab. You're probably going to get an idea of why I do this, because here's a finished episode. Just ready to go. And we have all of our audio tracks. If I need to make any adjustments, I can, you know, just, just tweak the settings. We need to come up, come down. Or if I wanted to get fancy with anything... You know, Fusion, not Fusion. Come on. I never use Fairlight. I don't... I'm not terribly against the audio processing in DaVinci, but eh, it, it's not the best thing in the world, but at least it gives me my um, EBU meter that I can take a look at and be like, all right, that's about right. But I mean, it should be right. So yeah, that that's like the main thing there. Um, you can see here, let me just pop that off. This would be the video file that I import. I just drop it in. Boom, I'm done. Let's say there was a sync issue. I can take these clips out and say I don't need these two clips. And let's move that. Say I needed to like readjust that. Or if I needed to come in, you know, if I just wanted to do it from here, I'd be like, oh, you know what? That peak's too loud. I'm going to adjust it and just be like, boop. There, I'm done. That's, that's it. So... Once I'm done with that, you know, this this is just drop in, chop the ends off, make sure it looks right. You know, that's the beginning. Here, let's zoom in. Get the idea. You know that how we started and then we woo, blur effect, then we come in. Then we start talking for about an hour. That that's kinda how that rolls. Once we're done with that, and I'll pop over to the deliver tab. Once one deliver tab, you know, I just export QuickTime 265 NVIDIA using um, VBR high quality audio again, um, keeping it wave 48K 32 bit. And that's that. So I'm going to quit resolve what we will end up with. I don't know if I still have the LWDW from this week. I most certainly do not, but. Let's pretend that's called LWDW episode, whatever it was. I haven't had any conversions with the audio this entire time. So we've maintained uh, without any conversions a 32-bit float. So what I would do is just drop that right into Audacity and... This is where I'm going to make... This is Wolfenstein that Jordan and I were playing last night. And this should have... You know, I think this has... Yeah, three audio. It has a stereo pair and it has Jordan's audio and my audio. And I exported this out with DaVinci this morning and got that uploaded. But yeah, from there I would just have the podcast. That's the podcast. You know, if that was Weekly Daily Wednesday, I'd drop it over then... We just do an export that exported out 96 mono and we're done. So hopefully, hopefully question mark. I don't know, man. Did that make any sense? Do you understand the uh, madness to my methods? Maybe you don't. Maybe you do. Maybe I'm doing entirely wrong. Who knows? But yeah. Oh. With OBS, if you're wondering, like, if we have, like, a... I am on the wrong thing. There we go. Like a four-shot with our video. Now, my video is coming in over 
a Blackmagic Intensity Pro 4K, but you can see I also have the Quad HDMI recorder from Blackmagic as well. That's the thing. It's the Nikon D3400 DSLR plugged into that. And that's how that works. But um, you'll see Pedro and Jordan, and well, let me go to the 2 4 shot, and you can see. Pedro Jordan and Guest, they are coming in over NDI, which is just like lightly compressed. Um, I think it's using MPEG too, and that's coming in over the network and through here. So we don't need uh, multiple encoders, even though I do have the capacity to just run HDMI from all these boxes and use NDI. It's clean, it saves a bunch of cables, and that's how we get video in from these three boxes and short it's sweet does the job and the same thing with these boxes you know the audio is using effectively the same system on this box uh it's virtual syncs with pulse audio jack bridge it takes the audio and converts it and sends it over the network into this box where we do the processing in real time and this box saves a dry copy and pushes out you know, this effectively the stem so i'm getting the separate audio channels to this box and which is pulled in through OBS and OBS smashes everything down to a stereo pair for the live stream but the video is set up in the way to where we get our individual audio channels recorded and, you know in 32-bit wave along with the DNX HD video that we can then pull into DaVinci Resolve make any last minute tweaks and export the video then from the video that we would have to upload to YouTube, I can just boom, pull that audio track out again, not having to change it around anything and just make an MP3. Ah, there. I don't even want to look at how long this was. It took a minute. Maybe that was helpful. Maybe it wasn't. I don't know. But hey, there's the update. There's the mid 2020 hasn't killed us yet update for what we do at Linux Gamecast Weekly. Uh... Come check us out. That's LinuxGameCast.com. We're on Twitch. Uh, we have, I think we have a YouTube channel. I upload stuff to a place, so I hope we do. Or somebody is terribly confused. I do want to thank... Um, hey, speaking of the studio, that these are some of the people that have helped stick it together. They picked up stuff off of our wish zone. Um, they're like little... They're game sharks, man, for sticking this stuff together. And I get to make the videos and like, Hey, everyone, this is how you could do this stuff. Um, yeah, Carl, Mike, Basil, or Theron... Linux Neuro, Aldeus, and Noctulus. Noctulus? Yeah, let's go with that, man. Don't forget Frank. He's back there. He's being awesome. Also, Patreon. Game changer for us, man. If you got an extra buck a week, man, we will gladly take it. And hopefully, I've been doing this for 10 years now, man. And audio video production under Linux. We do games, but that's kind of like my side project is I want to... Try to simplify some of this stuff, or at least show you what is possible using open source software and um, Linux, man. We can do some cool stuff, and I hope you make some cool stuff too. If you do, share it with me. Let me know about it. But that's going to do it. Keep being awesome, and get out there. Make something cool. <laughs>